Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. How does the use of fossil fuels such as coal and oil contribute to climate change and global warming? What are some of the more innovative ideas to develop clean alternative sources of fuel? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about this and other hot button issues. Welcome back to Global Connections Television. Most of the scientific studies show that climate change is taking place. The earth is getting warmer. One of the approaches to dealing with this problem is to look for alternative fuels that we can use in a clean fashion in our cars and other sources. My guests today are two individuals who are very involved in dealing with this issue. My first guest is Mr. Arnaldo, Arnaldo. Piedra de Cavallo, a Brazilian national who is an energy specialist with the Inter-American Development Bank located in Washington, D.C. My second guest is Dr. Daniel Faustin, and he is a Haitian national, and he is the executive vice president of a group called CIMACT, which we'll get into in a minute, and it's an organization of Haitian professionals that is working to promote agriculture, commerce, and tourism in Haiti. Arnaldo, Daniel, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you being with me. We're going to get into these, this hot button issue of alternative energy. That is on the lips of most people around, not in, just in the United States, but around the world. But let's talk a little bit about your organizations first. The Inter-American Development Bank. What is the Inter-American Development Bank, IADB, and what does it do? It's a regional development bank, the oldest and the largest, has been created exactly 50 years ago. We provide uh, loans, guarantees, and technical operations, grants to Latin America and the Caribbean. Last year, we approved $12 billion in loans, just to give you an idea of the amount. Historically, the largest um, uh, participation in the loans was the energy sector, you know, the, the main item in the pipeline of the bank along the 50 years of the bank. And we provide loans, as I mentioned, but also grants, so we are also, besides being a bank, we are like a development agency, you know, not just providing loans, but helping the development of the region. And if our viewers are interested in more information, they can go to www.iadb.org and get some information about the bank. And we'll get into a little more about what you're doing in the energy sector. Uh, Daniel, what are your organization, CIMAC, that's an acronym. It's, right. Okay, C what does that stand for? In, CIMAC. In French and, and English. <laughs> okay. CIMAC is an acronym for Société Immobilière d'Agriculture, de Commerce et de Tourisme. We are involved in tourism, agriculture, commerce in general, real estate included. And uh, someone may want to uh, go to our website, that's www.simact.net, and uh, there will be some more details that they can uh, take advantage of to know more about what we do. Mm -hmm. Basically, a group of seven colleagues, physicians, met some 12 years ago, and felt that they have an obligation to consider helping the motherland in some way. We uh, chose the for-profit approach and so we started investing our own seed money into a company uh, which is now uh, comprised of 50 investors and uh, each and every branch of our uh, complete uh, program is progressing 
um, at different paces, but uh, uh, we're making progress. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you mentioned, our viewers can go to www.simact.net. That N -E -T. Net, right, to get more information. So it sounds like both are with very interesting organizations, different in many respects, but still yes, similar in that you are looking at the energy issue and alternative forms of energy. Well, the, uh, over the years we've discovered there's a, there is a wide range of reasons as to why we now have a situation where climate change is taking place. Uh, it's because of the use of fossil fuels, it's because of over population on the planet. The planet can only absorb, apparently, or handle so many people on this earth. What have you found that most people are aware of these? Do you feel that there is, as you deal with professionals and the, the public, that most people are aware that these conditions do contribute to climate change and global warming? Arnoldo? We feel that people are quite aware, but maybe they don't know exactly how to help the situation. What are the possibilities of, uh, of any contribution the population could provide. So maybe in that respect there's some uh, room for, for improvement. No? People are worried but they have you know, to, to, to get uh, information about how they can you know, improve the situation. And they can do in different ways, you know? in their home, their work, and, you know, when they buy equipment, if they buy a, a more efficient equipment for instance, they are already contributing. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we all can contribute to, there's no doubt about it. We can all, through our individual personal decisions, make decisions to buy fuel-efficient equipment or to turn out the lights or, or just do a variety of things to help cut down on the use of energy and to use clean energy.